The amount of times that I've been playing a chess game, had a winning position, a winning advantage, but haven't been able to convert that into a full point, is way too many times. And it's very likely that if you're watching this video and you're watching a chess channel in general, you're probably a chess player and it's probably happened to you as well. So this video is going to increase your ego, which is not a good thing particularly, but in this video, I'm going to analyze a game of a super GM in which they had a, such a dominating position, but at the end, they didn't manage to win the game. And not only that, they didn't even draw, they lost the game. So enjoy. With the white pieces, we have Vidit Gujarati playing against David Navara. So we have a super monster from India, Vidit continues to be a very strong player. This game was played a couple of years ago, but he continues to deliver good performances. They recently played in the Olympia. They won the Olympia, so he was part of that team and he delivered very good games. And David Navarra, on the other hand, would, would be a lie if I said that he was a weaker opponent. He's a very strong player from Czechia. He continues to be a very strong player, although he was definitely on his peak more a couple of years ago rather than now on com in comparison to Vidit. But he continues to be part of the elite. So this game started with d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, and b6. This is what we call the Queen's Indian defense. White plays a3. It turns out that in this Queen's Indian defense positions, the e4 square is quite important. Black is going to play bishop b7, and black will have two minor pieces attacking that e4 central key square. So white plays a3. And then, well, knight c3 is going to be much better, but okay, white plays bishop f4 first, d5, occupying the center, c takes d5. In this position, black doesn't want to take back with a pawn, that would block the bishop. So black takes with the knight, gains a tempo on the bishop on f4, so white plays bishop g3. Black de de develops the knight to d7, e4, knight f6. I know this knight hasn't developed yet, just wait for it. In this position, of course, developing the knight wouldn't work. e4 is under fire. You have to defend that pawn on e4. The white had to push it again. It would be incredible if you could keep both of these pawns in the center like that. But unfortunately, you have to create a hole on d5. So that's the reason of black not scared of this e4 push. Many of you would think, oh no, white has all the center. I have to go back and that's bad. But it's not bad. If you think concretely, now white has to push this pawn again, which means that black will have a hole on d5. Or play what David Navarra played in the game, which is knight h5, which gains the bishop pair, but it does give white a little bit of development. So white plays finally knight c3. There we go. Bishop e7 continuing development. And now white plays bishop c4, in which black is kind of already... There must be something in black's mind that should scream, hey, king safety-wise, I think I have to start castling now. I think I have to start preventing my opponent's idea. Because what black played, which is still fine objectively, but maybe practically is not the best, is a6, preventing maybe uh, knight b5, maybe queen e2, bishop a6 ideas. Now white plays d5. And all of a sudden black has to be very accurate, which wasn't the case. David Navarra took on d5. And this is, a blunt, this is the first blunder of the game. And not only that, but this is the reason why black got a losing position. So... In this position, the best move was knight c5, preventing d takes e6 to some extent. You trade queens maybe, and you don't lose immediately. But what happened is that e takes d5, now bishop takes d5, and all of a sudden, black is in trouble. Why? Well, if you take the bishop, you have both knight takes d5 or queen takes d5, let's say this, this, or rook d1, and all of a sudden, white is more active. Black has to deal with this d file business. This is not good for black. So after bishop takes d5, black tried knight takes g3 followed by c6, but this loses to the brilliant bishop takes f7. Very good and genius find by Vidit, because after king takes f7, you say e6, king takes e6, and the king on e6 is absolutely vulnerable. You're going to get checkmated if your king is on e6. So in this position, white is winning. This is plus 1.6 for white, probably even more if you let the engine think more. Uh, longer but in this position after queen e2 once again black made another mistake black went king f7 the best was king d6 and after knight d4 knight c5 this is very difficult to find in a game you're just putting your king and the queen in the, the same in the same file this is this is ridiculous business but according to the engine this was the lesser evil 
But black went king f7, a very human move. And after a queenside castling, even though white is down a minor piece, this is absolutely winning for white. Because the king is exposed, the d-file is not very good for black. Black is pinned along the d-file. This bishop on b7 is looking at nothing. Um, rook h1 is coming. Black is in trouble. Black tried bishop f6. Knight e4 getting that knight into an attacking square. Queen e7, knight d6, king f8. And after the queen trade, white got back the material. But not only that, black is essentially underdeveloped and losing. So white is winning because white is better act uh, uh, activity-wise, better developed. And not only that, but the king's safety is also a very important aspect of this position. At some point, white will give start start giving checks to that king. It's going to be a mating net at some point. You will see. Black played knight f6. White played knight e5. Not threatening knight, knight takes c6 yet because of the c file pin but maybe king b1 and knight takes c6 c6 is going to be always a weakness so putting a knight attacking that weakness right away uh, can't hurt knight d5 played king b1 as expected rook c8 rook h1 and now white's pieces are doing very well all of them are doing very well you if you're worried about rook c7 don't worry knight takes c6 is saving the day but in this position something kind of weird happened black Already seeing that this is a worse position goes for bishop takes a3, trying to complicate things. This is what super grandmasters do. When they know that things are not going their way, they gamble. They say, okay, if I just sit around and 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 and, and receive all the, the hits, I'm eventually going to lose. It's just going to be longer, but that doesn't make it any better. So I might as well make things crazy in one move in hopes that white goes wrong. But white did not go wrong, at least not yet. Because white plays knight takes e6, the best move. Now this is plus 4 for white. Bishop b4. What, what black is was it hoping for, by the way, is some craziness with knight c3. But white says, no, I don't want any of that. I'm going to play knight takes e6. If you take back, I take on d5. And I'm much better because I'm threatening rook d8 and b, b takes a3. And it's very difficult to defend as black. So black goes bishop b4. White trades. And now we get the position rook d7, h5. Knight d6, rook a8, and doubling on the seventh file uh, rank, and this is the absolute dream for a chess player. You have two rooks in the seventh rank, invading black's side of things. You would expect black to resign in this position, because all your pieces are around your opponent's king. And I was actually surprised that there is no forced checkmate in this position, but it is definitely winning. This is plus five. According to the engine, plus five, that's crazy. So after this, many of many people thought, okay, David Navarro is going to resign anytime soon. But okay, David played Rook H7. He said, okay, let me let me just see if I can maybe cause some trouble. I know I'm losing, but I'm going to continue defending as much as I can. But he played knight e4, good move, transporting the knight to g5. So black played rook h6, reacting to that knight g5 threat. White took the pawn on g7, creating the threat of check, check and getting the exchange ultimately. So black plays rook d8, claiming that if rook takes d8, king takes g7. Black is doing a very good job at defending this position. This is the good thing about this um, this game, that it does show off how super GMs are just so resilient and so stubborn. You have to kill them over and over and over. So b3 was played. There are many lines in which, um, in which that king is getting checkmated, but ultimately, this is the losing mistake for white. Now, when I say losing, it doesn't mean this is objectively losing. This is equal. So white from going from plus 5 goes to equal in only one move. And you know why? Because white relaxed. Bid it. Odds are bid it said, okay, I have two rooks in the 7th seventh rank. There's no way I'm losing this, right? Like, there must be a way to put pressure. But for some reason, bid it played b3, right? The winning move was rook se uh, 7. Sorry, how do I say that? Rook 7, f7? Rook df7, what am I saying? And after king e8, you play b3 now. So I think that Bidet just mixed up the move order. Because after b3, rook takes d7, black managed to trade the rook that was doing nothing for a very active rook on the 7th rank. So, rook takes d7, a5, f3, and this endgame is equal. This endgame is equal, black plays king f7, there is no clear weakness for white to attack. So, for example, b6 and h5, 
those are two weaknesses that's correct but there's there it's not easy to attack and on top of that black is getting ready to play knight d3 so for example rook h7 knight d3 rook c1 is a problem there's always some checks white has to be careful about something like let's say this 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 and all of a sudden rook c2 rook a2 um that's why in this position white goes rook d2 which is a little bit passive but if we add up all this all these background story this context of vidit having a winning position we understand why vidit is just all of a sudden maybe not playing the most accurate end game in in, in the world or that he's played before the rook d6 played by navara rookie two vidit has this same spirit of hey i want to win this game i was winning let me win this game but this is equal and this is a problem in chess you have to unfortunately ad adjust to the new circumstances it's very difficult, it's easier said than done. But Vidit probably was very angry with himself that he let the win go. So he's rejecting all the draw offers that Black is giving him. So, for example, in this position, after 9b1, 9d5, king c2, 9b4, they pretty much have a perpetual check that Vidit could take any time. But Vidit goes 9a3. And this is a little bit risky. Maybe this is, this is not losing objectively, but this is a little bit risky. 93 played by Navara. Navara continues to play very well this game, by the way. Even though he did had a, have a losing position out of the opening, he adjusted to his new circumstances extremely well, and he continued defending. So it would be it would be a loss of instructiveness, if that makes sense, to say that there's nothing to learn out of Navara's play. Even though he had a losing position and he's in the losing side of this game, that doesn't mean we can we can't learn from what he's doing. He is very resilient, he's very stubborn, and after knight c4, knight takes c4, b takes c4, we get to this rook endgame, which is also a draw. Black plays a4. There's only one pass pawn black has, and it's very difficult for white to create a pass pawn along the g file or the f file. Technically, this pawn on, on, f, uh, on the f3 square is a pass pawn, but it's very difficult to advance. White tried king c2, I think what white is trying to do is get the rook to d2, d5, b5, get to a king pawn endgame in which they're winning black play rook b3 rook d2 king rook b4 another draw repetition offer by black black is very happy with the draw but vidit goes for king d4 vidit is angry with himself well okay this is what i think by the way uh, don't 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 kill me in the don't 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 blame me so much in the comments this is what i think I, 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 I'm a very big Vidit fan, but this is what I think that happens to everyone. We're all humans. I think Vidit was angry with himself that he didn't manage to win the game. And after a3, well, he went for king d4. After a3, rook a2, king e6, c5, good move, b5. Already here, white has to pretty much accept the draw. Um, and I have, not only that, but white has to find a very accurate move, which is rook a1. Um, the, the reason why you play rook a1 is because after b4, king c4, rook b2, you play rook d1, which is difficult to find. It looks like you're losing after a2, but you have c6. And after rook b1, you have c7. And you're queening with check. So, already you have to find difficult moves. You have to find rook d1 cutting the king. It looks like your pawn is very slow, but it's not. It's arriving just in time. But once again, did it plays g4 and now it's not only that they're he's playing for risk for risky positions but now g4 is a blunder g4 is minus two so black survived black continued surviving and playing very accurately according to the position black understood that it's going to be a draw probably so they were happy with the draw draw but now black is winning h takes g4 was played f takes g4 and after b4 black spawns are quicker than white spawns Vidit tried g5, rook b2, rook a1, a2, and already here, you can see that b3, rook b1 is a very big threat. And the king on e6 is surprisingly doing a very good job at stopping both of these two pawns. So g6 was tried, b3, c6, but unfortunately after rook c2, black is threatening to take this pawn. White tried cutting the king off like that, but after b2, g7, and rook takes g2. White tried one more move, c7, and after king d7, Vidit resigned this game. So all the way from this position in which we have the unfortunate move b3, which is the reason why Vidit didn't win this game, 
Vitted only had to play this and then b3. It's easy for me to say, by the way. I, I, I make worse mistakes. So don't, don't think I'm trying to be the boss here. Um, but that was the only mistake that Vitted had to, to make in order to lose this game. Um, b3 in this position. Because it trades a very active rook for a very passive rook. And after that, it was all psychological. This is still a draw. You can take the draw as, as many times as you want as Vidit. But knowing that he was winning, he, did, he said, no, I don't want to draw. And lost the game. Thank you very much for watching. Hope that was instructive. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, subscribe to this channel. Give a like. It would really support me. It would really encourage me to make more videos like this. You can do it over there to subscribe or watch another video over to my right. I think. And have a nice day.